There are two fundamental things that every good platformer will always have, those being character movement and level design. Both of these things exist in a symbiotic relationship, where one feeds into the other. And in a good platformer, the level design supports the player's movement abilities and forces the player to use all of its nuances. And the player's movement abilities make it fun to traverse the levels. Eventually, I want to talk more about designing player actions and the relationship that this has to level design, but today I want to dive into level design to lay foundation for that and many other future discussions. Today I'm going to take the opportunity to talk about the indie platformer Celeste and analyze the game's level design. Without further ado, let's begin. There are a lot of things that Celeste gets right. But let's start by talking about the game's ability to teach the player the game mechanics without using words, because this bit of game design is applicable to any platformer. Platformers have been doing this ever since Super Mario Bros. on the NES, and many great platformers have followed its lead, including Celeste. Even non-platformer games like Half-Life 2 have taken advantage of this technique showing that this lesson is applicable to many games across several game genres. Every level in Celeste has a variety of level-specific mechanics to teach the player, so it is vitally important that the game can consistently show the player how these mechanics work. So how do the developers of Celeste use their level design to teach the player about their mechanics? Well, for starters, the developers don't immediately throw their most difficult challenges at the player from the very start of the level. Instead, they ease their players into the mechanics slowly, introducing one new idea at a time. For example, let's look at the first stage in the game, the Forsaken City. This level comes after a brief prologue, which introduces the player to the basic mechanics of the game, a jump, a climb, and a dash. Aside from this, the player knows nothing. The game starts them off with very simple challenges that further reinforce their skills. The first screen allows the player to get past it using either their wall climb or dash. On the second screen, the players will likely see the strawberry, an optional collectible that the player can collect throughout the game, by showing their mastery in platforming or exploration. This strawberry is a bit different from the rest of the strawberries in the game, however, because it is out in the open, and compared to the later strawberries, it is quite easy. However, with the player's current skill set, they aren't able to reach that strawberry. At this point, the player might notice the spring and will try jumping on it to see what it does. And of course, the spring flings the player into the air so they can grab the first strawberry using a dash. If the player fails, they will not be punished too severely since they'll just fall back onto solid ground where they can try again. Now the players know what springs do. After this, the intensity is increased because the player must now combine two previous skills to pass through these spikes unharmed. They must use the spring and dash to reach the other side. After this, the player is at a dead end, which forces the player to experiment with their known skills to progress. In this case, the player can see that the level continues upward, so they might try climbing the wall only to realize that their grip strength will give out and they will slide back down. Eventually, the player will realize that they can jump from wall to wall in a sort of wall jump maneuver, which was created using the existing mechanics the player had already been taught. The next panel continues this pattern of combining old skills to introduce new ideas and increase the difficulty. In this case, the player must combine a dash with a wall jump or climb to get to this safe platform. Eventually, the game will have a large pool of mechanics and ideas that it can combine with new ideas, or combine two previously unlinked ideas and skills. For example, this level introduces the player to these bouncy clouds that fling the player into the air if they jump at the right time, and also strong winds that slow the player movement in one direction. It introduces the player to each of these mechanics separately, in a relatively safe space, before the player is shown this panel, which forces them to use the knowledge of both the bouncy clouds and the wind to progress. If the player does not fully understand these obstacles when they're first introduced, they will not be able to pass, and this ensures that any player that makes it to the later obstacles will have the skills they need to pass the challenge, 
Ultimately, if the player more fully understands the level mechanics, the developers can include harder challenges to test the player on that mastery. And this method allows the developers to teach mechanics without clunky tutorials that bring the pace of gameplay to a crawl. Almost every platformer worth its salt uses a method similar to the one I just laid out. But there is a lot more to appreciate about the level design of Celeste. Before I dive into more of these specifics, I want to briefly talk about how the game uses its optional collectible strawberries. The strawberries are included to challenge the more skilled players. In order to obtain a strawberry, you need to prove your mastery and understanding of the game's mechanics beyond what is simply required to beat the game. Celeste does some things with its strawberries that I find quite interesting. A lot of games with collectibles tend to reward the player with in-game bonuses for finding them. For instance, in Shovel Knight, there is a unique power-up which the player can find on every level that gives the player new movement and combat abilities, or there are music sheets that the player can find to give the bard for money which they can use to further improve their character. In Mario, the player is rewarded with coins for finding secrets which may lead to additional lives. However, the strawberries in Celeste don't give the player any in-game advantages and only act as challenges for experienced players. Neither design is necessarily better than the other, but one advantage of Celeste strawberries is that less skilled players don't feel like they need to go out of their way to collect the strawberries. In a game like Shovel Knight, less skilled players may feel like they need to scour every level for the special collectibles, because they don't want to miss out on a new ability. If the player happens to miss one, or if it is just too difficult for them to reach, they will feel like they're missing out, and this, in turn, might bring on loss aversion. To be fair, Shovel Knight does get around this problem by allowing the player to buy any collectibles that they missed, but Celeste avoids it entirely because its collectibles give the player no mechanical advantage. If a player feels like the challenge is too hard for them, they can just go back to the main path and continue the level. The developers are able to include challenges that may still be interesting for more skilled players, but the main game can still be rewarding for less experienced platformers. A wider variety of people can enjoy Celeste without the experience being harmed for either kind of player. A lot of platformers use their level design to teach the player about their mechanics, but there is still a lot to appreciate about Celeste's level design so let's dive in to see what the game does well. For instance, let's talk about how the developers view the narrative structure of Celeste. The developers view the game's story as a fractal story, or a story made up of smaller stories. On a game-wide level, the entire game is about a woman who climbs a mountain and confronts her anxiety along the way. But this story is broken into several smaller stories. Each level in Celeste contains one of these smaller stories, that each have their own distinctive narrative arcs, aesthetic design, and mechanics that set it apart from the rest of the game. For instance, in the Mirror Temple, Madeline is exploring a spooky ancient temple with her friend Theo before the two are separated. Eventually, she discovers and gets trapped inside of a giant mirror and is then pursued by Lovecraftian monsters until she finally finds Theo trapped inside of a crystal. Madeline must carry him out of the temple, and eventually, the two escape. This level introduces red bubbles that carry Madeline across the screen, platforms which move when she dashes, and the aforementioned Lovecraftian abominations. These mechanics make up the level's mechanical identity, and are unique to this stage. Even the levels can be further broken down into smaller stories. In Celeste, every panel or gameplay challenge also creates a mini-story for the player to experience. These are the moment-to-moment -moment experiences that the player will have while playing through the level. This story will be different for everyone, but I'll get back to that later on in the video. Taking the Mirror Temple as an example again, on this panel, I jump up into a bubble, fly over to the right side, fly down in a straight line, climb back up to the bubble, shoot myself across to the other side, hit the last switch to open the door, climb the wall, fly back to safety, and then collect my strawberry. This is just one example of one of these panel stories which make up each level. All three of these story levels act 
as an anchor when designing levels, and the developer can jump back and forth between all three of these levels to make sure that each panel fits into the level, and each level fits into the game as a whole. All of this goes back to the idea of the narrative tension curve, which I bring up in my boss fight video. Each level of a story needs to fit into this curve of rising tension, because this is what makes a game satisfying and enjoyable to play. On a game-wide level, the game gets harder the further the player progresses, and the story takes several unexpected turns, each of which raises the stakes and develops the themes and narrative of the game. Similarly, each level gets harder as the player progresses and more mechanics are introduced and combined until at last, all of the level's elements come together for one last climactic test of the player's knowledge of the mechanisms. The panels are no different, and each one raises the tension as the player attempts to pass it. This could be because the player's grip strength is running out soon, or simply the fact that dying so close to the end of a panel will reset all the player's progress on that challenge. But let's look a little bit closer to see how the developers use these micro-stories to guide their level design. This is one panel in the final version of Celeste. The story for most players will go something like this. The player needs to dash onto this block, which will begin to fall. Before it does, the player needs to jump to this platform, but if the player jumps too soon, they will die in these spikes. But if they jump too late, they will fall to their death on the ice. All of the level design decisions were made to support this tension, and any elements that undermined it were removed. In the first draft of this level, there were no spikes on the left, so there was no tension that was created if the player jumped too early, since they could just climb onto the ledge. And that story isn't super interesting. In the next version of the level, the spikes are present, and the developers decided to focus on building the tension around them. They also made the block more forgiving and easier to jump onto because the main tension of the story didn't revolve around reaching the block. It was about timing your jump at the right time. The story of how you get to the block wasn't as important as the story of you timing your jump correctly. This version also had a problem with players trying to skip that block entirely and trying to go to the second block, which completely undermined the story the developers were trying to tell. In the next version, this problem was solved by pulling these spikes up, making it nearly impossible to jump to the second block. These were all the major changes that the level experienced, but they all revolved around the story that this panel was trying to tell. This approach to level design keeps their levels focused and directed, and helped the developers diagnose problems that their levels might have. Celeste's levels are built around tension, but not all tension is the same. Let's drill down a little bit more and analyze how the developers raise the tension on a panel-wide level using their level design. In Celeste, the players have a very limited set of actions which they can take at any time while not on solid ground. They can dash, wall jump, or climb. The developers of Celeste took a lot of inspiration from mountain climbing, in which different positions are more or less safe in different ways. For instance, a climber might need a lot of core strength for balancing purposes, or they could use a lot of finger strength to grip onto a shallow hold. Madeline can dash in eight different directions, and this can extend her jump trajectory. However, the player can only use it once before needing to touch solid ground. When Madeline is climbing up a wall, she only has so much stamina, and once it is depleted, she will begin to slip. Wall jumping, on the other hand, is powerful because the player can do it forever without needing to spend a limited resource like the other two actions. But her jump throws her quite far from the wall, and she cannot get any higher by just jumping off one wall, like you can in Super Meat Boy or Hollow Knight. The designers can leverage each of these different kinds of tension to create levels that are tense in different ways. A level that has a lot of difficult jumps, but has some safe spots the player can cling onto for a moment, will feel very different than a level with a lot of easy moves, but no real place for safety in between. Using many different kinds of tension can keep stages from feeling repetitive, and like they're just having the same idea over and over again, and only making minor changes. Having levels with different kinds of safety where players can, to an extent, choose what kind of safety they want to use makes the levels feel more expressive and dynamic.
Occasionally, the game uses levels like this, where the player needs to hit all of the switches to open the door. You can see the many different kinds of safety at play in these stages, and the player has a lot of choices on how to approach these stages, and that ties in well with the next aspect of Celeste's level design I wanted to cover. These ideas about safety and multiple kinds of tension all come from mountain climbing, but these weren't the only places that the developers took inspiration from mountain climbing. They also took inspiration from the fact that when you're climbing a mountain, there are multiple approaches a climber can take, and this is just one place where the developers took a lot of inspiration in their level design. This design decision allows the player to be more expressive and creative in how they get from point A to point B. For example, on this panel, the player can get past it like this, like this, or like this. And all three of these solutions are valid. This helps the game feel less like a linear series of challenges that the player needs to solve in a super specific way, and more like the act of actually climbing a mountain. However, the developers were careful not to go too far in this direction. Because at the end of the day, Celeste was designed to be a difficult game, and if the player could get past any obstacle in the game in a hundred different ways, this may undermine that fact. However, the developers managed to strike that balance and deliver an experience that allows for player expression, but is still difficult to overcome. As you can see, Celeste has a lot of interesting level design lessons for designers. Whether it's the ability to teach the player their mechanics through level design, the fractal story structure that is used to focus the development of the game's levels, the use of several kinds of tension to increase level variety, or allowing for multiple approaches to pass the level's obstacles, there's a lot to be learned from Celeste's masterful level design. And this is really only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to level design. And I hope to revisit the topic at a later time. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. But until next time, this has been Chariot Rider. Have a good day.